Hello everyone, this is Larry, and welcome to Larry and Amy's Kitchen. Today we're going to try a recipe that's a little more involved than what I normally try and make. By involved, I mean there's a lot of steps that you have to take in order to uh, accomplish your goal here. We're going to, over here Shug, if you would, we're going to be making ranch chicken baked stuffed shells. There's a picture of it right there so you can see what they're supposed to look like. We have made these before in the past and uh, we have loved them. So we wanted to go ahead and show you how we make them and hopefully you will try it. Your first time it's going to take you a little while to, to uh, get the hang of it. But after that uh, it will go a lot faster. Now the uh, one of the first things that you're going to have to have is some large jumbo pasta shells. You can buy these as you can tell by the name here at uh, Walmart or any grocery store. And the first thing you're going to want to do is put them in a pan of hot boiling water as you can see right there. Uh, this recipe calls for 24 of them. I have already pre-cooked them and in the interest of saving time. Plus I've also let them cool down a little bit because when you're trying to handle these to stuff them, they get very hot or can be. Now, the first thing it says to do while you're making or cooking the shells is to First of all, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, which I have done. Take a 9 by 13 pan and spray some cooking spray on it and set it aside. Go ahead and cook the pasta shells and while the pasta is cooking, prepare the sauce. Now, we will have all the ingredients that we have used down at the bottom uh, of this video for your reference when we are done. But the first thing we're going to have to do is melt some butter. It says a quarter cup of butter, which I'm going to put in there now. I wish there was a way to speed this up a little bit, but we don't have that capability. So we're going to let that get hot. And uh, while we're waiting for that to start melting, we are going to uh, mention what is in the sauce that goes uh, over these shells and in the shells. Butter, a little bit of flour, some milk, some Parmesan cheese, and a packet of ranch dressing seasoning. So. This is beginning to melt. There's, like I said, there's no way to speed this up. So we're just going to let it do its thing. And if it doesn't interfere too much, I'm going to turn this fan on above the stove here. This is so good, there's no way to describe. Uh, if you like chicken, which is what these are going to be stuffed with chicken and spinach there's going to be bacon bits um, and then part of this sauce that I'm making now this is melting right now so it says I'm going to turn this down melt the, the butter in a medium saucepan whisk in flour with a, and until a paste is formed we're going to be using a quarter cup of flour, so we'll put that in there. We'll put that back over on the heat, and we're going to stir that together real well. I hope you can see this okay. Mm -hmm. I picked this eye on the stove because it matches the size of the pot. Now we have definitely stirred it into a paste. That didn't take long at all. And then it says whisk in 
some milk. <clears throat> I need one cup of whole milk. I'm going to pour the, the milk in. This is going into the uh, making of the sauce which some of it you will use to stuff the shells with and, and then before you put it into the oven to bake you will actually pour over the top of these stuffed shells. Now we're supposed to cook this on low heat until it is just slightly thickened and then main thing here is also I want it to dissolve all the flour and butter mixture that we created in the beginning I don't know I've never probably mentioned this but if you see the type cookware that we're using um, once again you can find these at just about any store that sells cookware but it's the copper uh, cookware we have parakeets that we enjoy so much and we had heard that it is best not to use Teflon coated um, cookware when you're cooking that doesn't mean you can't use it but if you have any chance or possibility of burning something on the stove the Teflon is uh, possible or may possibly bother the birds <clears throat> birds have a very sensitive uh, respiratory system all right now this is starting to dissolve real good so what I'm going to do next and I have to keep referring back to my recipe guide because there is a lot of steps here and there's nothing wrong with that um, I'm gonna stir in the Parmesan cheese until it is fully melted. I need one cup of Parmesan cheese. So we're going to stir that in. Now I'm going to be the first one to say if you like cheese there ain't nobody that says you got to stick with just one cup of Parmesan cheese. If you're like us, now I think this here is pretty much one cup. You can add as much as you want. Uh, whatever suits your taste buds. If you need less, use less. But if you're like us, we would probably prefer to use more. <coughs> it's like when you go to a restaurant that sells pizza or pasta and they come around with that cheese grater I just assume they stand there and just <laughs> great and great and great over <laughs> over what we get almost to, to the point where you almost feel embarrassed but just don't stop keep going that's how much we like cheese now I have got that pretty much melted um, as far as the cheese goes and the last thing I need to do with the sauce is stir in the ranch packet of dressing seasoning and I'm sure if you do much cooking you've seen these in the store this is Hidden Valley ranch dressing great for recipes especially with chicken and we're just going to pour that over there just like that this is so flavorful or it adds so much flavor to your mixture we're going to stir that up real good I can smell it already mm, it smells good yeah I don't know what they put in this but it is so good I want to make sure it's all mixed in now um, after this is all mixed in I'm going to set it aside and then we're going to start building our stuffing as you want to call it 
for the uh, egg shells or the uh, pasta shells. I think that's pretty good right there. And as you can see, it's 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 pretty thick, <coughs> which is what you want. So for right now, I'm gonna set this aside, and we're going to combine some shredded chicken. I think it's about one cup of shredded chicken. Let me double check. Um, Do you leave the two. Off? Yeah. I left it on. Two cups of uh, two cups of chicken. One cup of frozen spinach. So let's do that. Let's uh, get a small mixing bowl or medium size. <clears throat> and we buy that uh, canned chicken. So we're going to put that in there like that. That was one whole can. And once again, you can add more than that if that's what you prefer to do. All right. Combine the shredded chicken. It says to put one cup of chopped spinach. You can buy this at uh, any grocery store. We buy the frozen chopped spinach in, uh, in the frozen food section. It costs a whole dollar. We let it thaw the day that we're going to be making our stuffed seashells and we're going to just drop that right in to our bowl with the chicken in it. Alright, next one cup of cheddar cheese will go in. Oh, that's a that's a good cup right there. It may be just a little more than that, but that's okay. Now I am going to let's see. Is there anything else? We need to use half of the uh, sauce, or yeah, about half of the sauce that we made just a second ago. I'm going to use two of these teaspoons. Or not teaspoons, but <laughs> big teaspoons. That's my my size <laughs> teaspoon. <laughs> and we're gonna just mix this all up together. And I tell you what, if you want to get a rough idea of what your meal is going to taste like, little secret. Of course, the only the chef is allowed to do this. Once you get this all mixed up, you just get you a pinch of it between your two fingers and put it in your mouth. Uh, you will want to eat the whole batch <laughs> before you put it in but you've got to have some willpower you can't do that now look how good that is mixing up together just like that I love it it's great for stuffing and it tastes so good oh my goodness I think well you don't want to make too much stuffing now I've got 24 uh, pasta shells that I cooked and we'll see how this works um, we're gonna leave that just like that let me make sure I've got everything done yep now we're gonna get that 9 by 13 pan that I misted with cooking oil or canola oil whatever you decide to use is it right here this pan as you can tell is well used but it is well loved it works so great for so many different things and what we're going to do I'm gonna clean my spoon off here I don't want to set it on the eye I guess I could set it over there next to you should mm -hmm. and uh, if I move this one out of the way because that one I'll set up here there we go yeah no. All right, now, naturally, I'm going to wash my hands real quick, even though they should be clean. I'm going to be handling the food. What I'm going to do is reach over here into the pot. I'm going to grab a pasta shell, 
and there's no right or wrong way to do this you're going to take a spoonful of this right here put it right in there like that and that's all you need to do we're going to be cupping these uh, well they'll, they'll shape back into their original shape once you put your stuffing inside and uh, I think at first you'll be a little apprehensive as to how much to put in each one so the first ones that you do may not have as much stuffing as the last ones depending on how much stuffing you've got left but uh, we're going to continue to stuff these but you know what if you had stuffing left over I don't see why you couldn't take a saltine cracker put a little bit on it and just help yourself and this is so simple to do once you get all these steps done to uh, make the ingredients that you need to stuff these now you can't really mess up because even if it, they don't if something were to happen you can just put you a bunch in a bowl or a plate and eat it with a fork and uh, but usually we have pretty good luck on these oh they're so good yeah they're a little bit slippery so this is why you got to get your hands right down in there into the mixture of it and stuff of stuff it in I know this is a repetitious thing but it's all part of the fun of making the stuffed shells. Now if you want to, you can also take you a little bit of green onion and mix in with this too. I just didn't happen to have any today, so I didn't add any to the mixture. But uh, you can be as creative as you want to be as far as adding anything to this. But I tell you what, that ranch dressing with the spinach and that sauce that you make takes it up a notch. It's I don't know, it's the bomb. That's that's the only way I can describe it. It has a flavor that you normally do not get through regular cooking. Alright. We're gonna continue here. Looks like I've got quite a bit of stuffing. The average person, I'll bet can eat five or six of these without too much trouble. Hence, that's why we made at least 24. Because <laughs> the nice thing is, is if you have any left over, you can put them in the microwave the next day and heat them up and enjoy them all over again. These are so slippery, especially when you start getting it on you hands. Oh, it's so good. Instead of uh, chicken, sometimes I wonder how, you know, using, trying to be creative, shrimp, cooked shrimp, that might Ooh, work. Ooh, I bet that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, let your imagination run wild. Uh, there's no reason why you can't use pork. Take you some uh, boneless pork chops, cook, pre-cook them, cut them up into small pieces. Possibly a ham. Same thing. A piece or two of ham, cut it up. In, anything that you can put or, you know, cut up into small pieces. It's getting to the point where these are getting harder and harder to hold on to. There we go. Put that right in there. I may not be the prettiest cook, but I tell you what, it sure does taste good, and that's what that's what you're uh, really going for, isn't it? Maybe not as fancy as some of those you see on the uh, recipe books and stuff, but are doctored up to make it look so pretty. All I care about is what it tastes like. Well, I tell you, whoever gets this one right here, they're going to have a big old piece of chicken in that one. 
I may have to mark that. <laughs> That's all right. I'll take care of y'all. I'll serve it to you. Make sure I save that one for me. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, if you can't have fun, what can we do? Can't afford to do anything else. So, and this meal, I don't know. Let me think a minute. It probably... Eh, you might spend 10 to $15 maybe tops to make this meal but where could you feed a family of three four five for that price nowhere that I know of um, now you can as far as a side dish goes you can pick whatever you want to go with it I mean if you want to make a plate of rice that's your cup of tea go for it as far as I'm concerned this is filling enough time you eat about a half a dozen of these um, but I don't care uh, macaroni and cheese baked potato you know it's, it's really whatever you prefer I'm getting down to the bottom of the pot here but we are are getting um, most of the shells. Some of these shells will wind up tearing up on you, which is no big deal. Uh, let's see, how many have I got here? 5, 10, 15, 19. Yeah, we'll go a couple more. I'm just about out of the stuffing anyway. hoping I could save a little bit and sneak a cracker or two in but while it's cooking. <laughs> Can't help it, I'm hungry. <laughs> Alright, let's stop there. Like I said, this is what we've gotten so far. We've got about 20 of these made. Let me rinse my hands off because they are slippery. Now, we're not done yet, but we're getting there. Alright, now once we have stuffed all of these, we're going to take the remaining sauce and pour it evenly over the pasta shells the best you can. You know, it's not going to be completely even, but we're going to do the best we can. Just kind of spread it out. Tell you what, in a little bit after we put this in the oven, your house is going to be smelling so good. If you're anywhere near starving half to death like we are, the other half will definitely catch up. <laughs> you will think your your stomach will think your throat's been cut. <laughs> okay. That looks so good. I see this sauce, it reminds me of biscuits and gravy. That's something we're gonna have to make one time too. You can't go wrong with biscuits and gravy. Something so cheap, easy to fix, but yet so filling. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Mercy. I'm going to compliment myself when I get done here. Pat myself on the back. Ooh. All right, we've almost got it all here. I'm going to put a little bit right on you. I done forgot where my special one was, so. Oh, well. Maybe I'll get lucky. All right, and then after that, we're going to sprinkle the top of these also with some crushed breadcrumbs. It just gets better and better. I don't know about you, but I know if you haven't eaten these, you don't know what I'm talking about. But your mouth, if it ain't watering, there's something wrong with you. I can almost pick one of these up since everything is pretty much been pre-cooked, so to speak. And, ooh, mercy. Oh, well. <laughs> like I said, we ain't going to be as pretty as some of, the, some of them recipe books, but it's going to be eatable. Now, last but not least, we're going to take some bacon bits that I fried up and sprinkle it all over the top. 
Now when you're serving these naturally you can any of them that fall off to the side, no biggie. Um, we're going to uh, you can pick them up with a spoon or whatever it is you're serving these with. You can also buy the bacon bits already that prepared uh, in a in the store. But I just I love that natural doing it myself, cooking the bacon. Okay. Now remember we've had the oven going at 350 degrees. The last thing I, I need to do before I put it in the best I can is <coughs> we're going to cover this and uh, let it cook for about 25 to 30 minutes and then after that time we're going to remove the cover and cook for an additional 5 to 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is try and get enough aluminum foil here kind of lightly cover it. I'm just going to lay it down very gently. Just tuck it under a little bit like that. And we'll make note of the time. And we'll put this in the oven. Oh, that, that smells so good. that cook for eh, we're gonna go 25 minutes every oven is different so we're gonna check it after 25 minutes what we're going to do is we're gonna take a short break and we'll come back when we get ready to pull it out of the oven let you take a look at it and uh, we'll once again repeat the ingredients plus they'll be listed at the bottom of this video and uh, see what you think so stay tuned for part two